to be blessed with me, me tonight. Y'all start clapping for my girl, my girl, your girl, our girl, Miss Me, Miss Baby. Go fast. This all for play, 
And I know everybody's looking at me real close, trying to figure out my age. I was a little girl when they invented Doritos. <laughs> a long time ago. Indeed. When they invented Doritos. But don't call me a cougar. I'm not a cougar. Because I date men of all ages. I'm an equal opportunity dater, baby. Oh, yeah. And if you want to introduce me to your grandfathers, please do. Please do. But let them know. No hearing aid is definitely a deal breaker. Because I got some good shit I'm going to be whispering to. <laughs> you know, and they need to hear it. And the good thing is, I saw a commercial. They're actually selling hearing aids across the counter. You know, we're modern women, right? We show up with a condom in this pocket. I'm going to start showing up with a hearing aid in this pocket. Yeah, baby, I'm going to put that puppy in, turn it up, and start to. You know, and then they hear all the things they want to hear here. Woo! I, I love older guys, you know. But younger guys are kind of more interested in committing than older guys, I found. Yeah, older guys, they'll take you to dinner a few times. They'll even take you to shows and three-day vacations for over a year. But no commitment. I tried to figure out what it was. I think they're protecting their assets. <laughs> Young guys don't have assets. It's on. But them older dudes, they got to do real research and a deep dive into Facebook to see if you're scandalous. <laughs> don't they know scandalous hoo-ha is just as good as not? Is she my mother's age or my grandmother's age? Ooh, this is my girl right here. This is my girl right here. They know. Sometimes I'll be their great grandmama's age. Hey. Oh, yeah. And don't think it's hard because you know how it is, you know. The people in the hood in the trailer park. Cultures always have babies at 15, don't they? Grandmama had them at 15. Great grandmama had them at 15. Grandmama had them at 15. That's 30. 21, I'm legal! Nothing to it, nothing to it. But for the record, just so you know, I don't go below 27. I don't go below 27, and Madonna has a man who's 28 right now. Right. So don't hate the player. Hate the what? Hate the yeah. Hate that game, baby. But I'll be playing that game and I'll be rocking it 60 plus and sexy. Yes. And the older guys, they don't have to worry about me. Some of you know where I'm going with this. They don't have to worry about me giving them a hard time, a difficult time of it. If they don't perform during that special moment, I'm not going to clown them. I'm not that chick. You know why? Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, because I love a good night's sleep. Oh, yeah, with a nice little cup. Second tries in the morning. 
the sun will come out tomorrow. But you gotta hang on till tomorrow. There'll be wood. All right. This is the interactive portion of the evening. Drum roll, please, ladies and gentlemen. And how do you ride your morning wood? She's a friend of my cousin's. Cousin, we gonna help her. <laughs> Let's try it again. Drum roll, please. And how do you ride your morning wood? Uh, just hop on top. <laughs> Anybody with me? Anybody with me? Anybody. 
mine hadn't had many visitors in a while. I think it was just a little homeless pussy karma. Just homeless pussy karma. I know I'm hot shit and think I'm all that and everything, but what you guys don't know is I did 12 years as a celebrant. I know. You guys are looking at me like you'd respect me more had I done 12 years in the pen. Well, fuck you guys. I love you, but fuck you guys. I've been a celibate five times. And celibacy is no joke. I have vibrators that packed up their bags and moved out. And those that stayed are picketing around my bed, protesting overtime. I'm lying. I never used a vibrator before in my life. Never. Uh-uh, with all the juices and stuff, I'm scared I'd electrocute myself. I don't want to have an orgasm and an electrocution. Y'all be liking. Oh, I figured it out. Y'all like that Rick James pain before the pleasure. That. Yeah. 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 You know, I don't need to go around the mountain just to get to the top. <laughs> no, no, I don't need all of that. But I tell you this, when the pandemic hit, remember there was a really small window when all of us were super afraid. We don't care now. But at one point, we all thought we were going to die. And in that moment, I talked to myself. I said, I think I could die. And I said to myself, and we ain't had none. And I said back to myself, in 12 years, you can't relate. This is horrible. There are no people in here who can relate because you guys are getting it on the regular. You're a regular. You guys are, some of you are semi-regulars. <laughs> Just figured I die. If I die, what the heck? I'll skip up to the pearly gates and stand before the Lord and say, It's an honor to be before you, Lord. I consecrated my life to you, even through celibacy. <laughs> I imagine the angels would say, Hallelujah. <laughs> or I could run and do a knee slide into the pearl again to say, forgive me, Lord. I've been. <laughs> doing it. And you know our God. You know, he'd say, oh, V, I forgive you because I was watching you <laughs> doing it and doing it well, doing it and doing it and doing it well. You my doctor. Absolutely. Everybody here, you guys don't fuck in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Y'all missing out. Y'all missing out. You're missing out. You know, because our God is omnipotent. I'm black. He's omnipotent, sir. Our God is omnipotent. He sees everything. He's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Get in that space. Talk to the Lord. See, most people like to make sex dirty and bad. I refuse. 
If I'm involved, it's excellent, supreme, and wonderful. Yeah. Ain't nothing dirty about my game. I am totally, absolutely, extremely marvelous. <laughs> okay, well, you guys can stay in that dirty, nasty world if you like to. I like to stay in the light. Me and the Lord be fucking niggas up. <laughs> And I'm not lying about that one. <laughs> oh my God, I'm just happy. Too much fun. But yeah, I was celibate because really, I'm a single mom with two sons diagnosed with autism. Yeah, okay, that's nothing. Yeah, but that's why you may have noticed the sparkle of crazy in this eye. <laughs> Anybody in here know anything about autism? Clap it up if you do. Okay, so you, you know, you know my struggles. I have two sons, they're so wonderful, I love them very much. The oldest has language and the youngest doesn't and you know, when we know what he needs, everything's great, right? But when we don't, what? Mayhem ensues. Y'all, holes end up in walls, furniture gets broken, it's just autism shit. It's just autism shit. It's nothing like coming home, for real. Nothing like coming home and seeing my son out back. Jumping, leaping, running, naked. With his high top Converse on. Just autism shit. But even though he's a non-speaker, I had a beautiful experience where I could see he had values. He cared about good parenting. We were leaving church one Sunday. Everybody was walking across the lawn to the parking lot. And my son jumps and stems like this. He flaps his hands for stimulation. And he was fixated on this one lady who had a baby on her hip. Now, I noticed he was looking because the baby was whimpering and the baby had a snotty nose. And I said, he's concerned about that child. I was like, oh. And then he jumped around over on the other side to point out to me that the baby had a huge diaper. This mother's out there chatting it up. Her baby is now starting to cry, neglecting the diaper. Then the baby started to wail. And do you know, my son was so touched, he couldn't do anything, so he just came back over by us. And because the baby was wailing, the crowd in front of the church stopped talking. All of a sudden, my son zoomed across the lawn and slapped that lady. <laughs> and the baby stopped crying. Yes, and I, I didn't know he was gonna run. I really would have wished I could have gotten there and protected her, because the poor lady didn't deserve to be slapped. But as my son tried it back to us, everybody on the lawn started giggling. I believe he righted her wrong. I believe my son was being used by the Lord. He was being used by the Lord, people. Mother of a black son. He was being used by the Lord. Because you know, absolutely, because you know, because you know, if he wasn't, if there was some Mexicans right in here, and maybe some Filipinos right over in here. All of us would have went to jail that day. We all would have been behind bars going, but the baby stopped crying. Yeah. Mother of a black son. You know, every time the phone rang for two weeks, I was like, is that the police? Is that the lady? Mother of a black son. But nothing happened, because I believe that baby looked at his mama and said, look, you mess with that lady, I'm gonna tell that little boy to come slap you again. <laughs> now, his older brother was there the whole time. He didn't do anything, it was his day off. He just watched. But he's an awesome son. You know how the oldest always take care of the youngest when there's a sick old mom. I love that guy. When I came back from getting the best birthday present I ever bought myself. Oh, 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 oh. Terry Crews has nothing on me. Yeah, so the 
kids knew I was having surgery. And my oldest son looked up at me and he said, Mom, I'm so happy for you. You got your dream. Now just go and fix that flabby butt. Oh, my, my son, my son. And then he zoomed out the room. I'm like, this little little kid <laughs> right, right. you know? I'm like, it's flabby because you were craving all them chili dogs when you were in utero. <laughs> and he yeah, ran right back in the room with his phone in my face with a picture of Nicki Minaj. I don't know if you guys know, do you know? Oh, it was Nicki Minaj before. Girlfriend was flat as an ironing board. And then, pow, pow! I was like, ooh, baby! Mama needs a new pair of badonks. A badonk and another badonk. A badonk and donkey, baby. Well, I ain't getting it no time soon. I'm still paying interest on these girls. No, we do. We go to buy something expensive and what do we do and negotiate the lowest monthly payment? Can you go a little lower than that? Can you go a little lower than that? I got 500 more payments before I own them. I'll probably be 173. But the bill's like I own them. But that shit got me in trouble. I got behind in my payments and that phone call came. I answered the phone. I realized it was a finance company, you know what I did? Hung that phone up! Yeah. Like a good red-blooded American! Yeah. <laughs> Weren't we all raised to hang that phone up? Yeah. But the calls kept coming and kept coming back and I started freaking out. Cause my girlfriend, where's she at? She told me, you know they got GPS in there. <laughs> I'm like, they are trapped! I didn't know what to do. My dude said, get a coconut. Exactly. That's what I said. But you know, we got to please our men, right? I got the coconut, chopped it in half. It was too small. He didn't even like coconut milk. So I figured it out. I got aluminum foil and I crafted the most perfect Oh my God, it fits so good. I wish I had a picture to show you guys, you guys. And, and the call stopped coming. It was so wonderful. And then it started cracking and breaking and itching. And I would have made another one. But the foil started pairing with the fillings in my teeth. Ah. And it was pulling down signals. <laughs> Then the coconut rang. I thought I was on killing assignment. <laughs> I answered it. It was a finance company. <laughs> you know what I did? I hung that coconut up. And I paid my bill on time. <laughs> you know, I do not want to walk out the door, turn the corner, and run into Diddy Repo. Be my luck, I'll pay just enough that they repossess one titty. No titty repo. No titty repo. But check it out, you guys. I I was the small breasted woman in a family of lots of large breasted women. So I couldn't wait. I got out to Hollywood and I saw you could buy them. Started saving my, saving and saving, saving. Say, by the time I got them, everybody in my family's cities are old and shriveled up. I can't even compete. <laughs> so crazy. But yeah, getting used to them was, a, was really, I don't know if anybody had to go through this, but they're heavy. And so my balance, I mean, navigating stairs was a bitch. And I did roll down that first set. <laughs> and it wasn't pretty. It was like clunk, clunk, clunk. It was not like, <laughs> no, that shit hurt. And then dating, you know how guys are. I'm on a date with this guy. And he's like, 
those are really big earrings. Saved by the big earring. Oh yeah, it's over there. Right there. say it's their cock ring. Somebody said that. I heard it. Did anybody else hear it like that? Or do I just like hearing cock ring? I knew you said it. All right. I'm eating a microphone and putting on my ear. Keep going, Dennis. I like that. deal with before. When I ate a pork chop, if I didn't have a napkin or if I wasn't at a table, the crumbs just fell to the floor. Uh -huh. When I ate a cookie, she's nodding. Crumbs just fell to the floor. Now I eat something and about five, ten minutes later I look down and I got leftovers. Crummy cleavage for forever. So if you have, I can tell she's not. If you have, baby, she said it goes way down. Hey, I'm looking for tips on how to prevent that. I need help so you can DM me or catch me when I'm leaving. I, I, <laughs> I really need to know how to combat crummy cleavage. You know, because people, you know, the hardest part is when people notice my crummy cleavage before I notice my crummy cleavage. Right. I like, I see them notice my crummy cleavage. They go, I got a crummy cleavage. And then they want to be nice and help. So, no, don't touch. No. One guy was just so caring. He snuck around behind me and he was standing right over there, blowing. I thought that was so sweet. Yeah, he ended up in ER. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, mess with a woman's crummy cleavage. It's just not kosher. It's not kosher. But you guys, I've had so much fun. You've had so much comedy. And we actually ran longer than we planned to. So before I leave, I just want to remind you all that in this comedy world, People don't take you seriously, unfortunately, unless you have thousands and millions of followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I have 661. I'm trying to get to 1,000 by New Year. Can you guys pull out your phone? Follow me at 3B's Comedy. B, 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 comedy. Yeah, yeah, because you know I go by one letter. My friends who've known me for years know my name is Vaina. All my life people mess that name up. And I don't want to be like Luther Vandross, you know? Because some of you are saying, no, it's Vandross. And I say Vandross. But you say Vandross, I say Vandross. I say he's gay. Some people say he's straight. I say he's gay. Some people say he's gay. Some people say he's straight. Because lots of people made babies to his music. But he, he could be gay. He could be straight. Vandross, Vandross. I'm going to be known as just the letter V. And I'm hetero. Hey. Hetero.
Hetero. Hetero. I am the penis in the vagina. perform Jouet in the building. I hope to see you next time here in this place. You guys just got a one good treat tonight. We have Andre Bailey in the building. Uh, we have some funny people. We have D-Rock. We have, we have so many people in here. I want to thank all you guys for supporting me tonight. And uh, come back next month. It's your girl Roz Washington. You guys follow me. Roz is funny. Roz is Right now, start clapping right now. Put this quick in the building. She's failing every grade. 